guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale and balance changes have just been announced guys and I want to share them with you. If you want the first news as soon as humanly possible about balance changes, new cards, updates, whatever, make sure you subscribe, turn on the bell to get notified of my videos and stay tuned to the end of this video because I asked Seth who is a game designer at Supercell Yo, what about these cards, man? Why are these four cards not on the list? So I'm going to share his answers on those cards at the end of the official list, just so we don't confuse anybody. So let's get to the 10 cards. That's right, one of the bigger balance changes that we've seen in quite a while into the game. So we're going to start with the buffs, guys. And where better to start than the card that you guys voted for? <laughs> It is the Dark Goblin getting a 4% damage buff. Me personally, I'm a fan of the Dark Goblin. It's a, pr a pretty cool card. I'm not sure that he needed a buff, but either way, I'm sure he'll just be a little bit more viable in the meta right now. I'm okay with it, although personally, I did think that Archers probably deserved it a little bit more. I'm not bitter, though. Next card's gonna be Inferno Tower, a 3% health increase. I'm approve of this as well. I know a lot of you guys on my balance wish list video said that you did not want the Inferno Tower to see any sort of a buff. Me personally, I think it is heavily overshadowed by the Inferno Dragon, so I'm happy to see this buff. Number three is Skeleton Barrel. This is a big buff, guys. We're seeing a death damage increase of 62%. It will now kill Spear Goblins flat out, uh, considering leak levels being equal, uh, as soon as it dies. So the death damage considerably increased by 62%. And the fourth and final card, that's right, four buff, six nerfs this time, is going to be... The Mega Knight. Mega Knight will be receiving a hit speed reduction, which is a buff, obviously, from 1.8 seconds to 1.7 seconds. I'm a fan of all of these buffs, guys. I do think that Mega Knight is right on the cusp of being meta or viable, but with all the P.E.K.K.A. going around, there's no doubt about it. I'm 100% I'm an approval, the Ash Stamp of approval of this buff, personally. Now let's go on to the nerfs. So, starting out with... the royal ghost and man he got hit hard and we all saw this one coming or at least most of us did it still it still surprises me that so many people think that the royal ghost was balanced he is he is the highest win percentage in use rate card and grand challenges out of any troop in the entire game by far and that's a real indicator of how many archetypes he fit in the versatility of the card and the strength of the card the nerf is going to be a nine percent health reduction that's pretty big i'm not sure if i'm, I'm a fan of that big of a nerf to the Royal Ghost personally I would have rather stayed to maybe 4% and see where he fell so that's gonna be the first kind of balance change that I think might have been a little bit too heavy-handed personally number two is going to be the Royal Hogs a 6% damage nerf to the Royal Hogs and this is a new one guys a 50% mass reduction what the heck is a mass reduction? Where where are the stats on the mass reduction or the mass strength of all these cards and the card stats? I haven't seen it, guys, but apparently it's a thing. The mass reduction basically means their in-game weight. Essentially, when you send in the Royal Hogs, they're able to kind of push smaller bodies out of the way as they plow or they pave their way into the lane, into the Princess Tower. That's no longer going to be quite as strong, their charge ability. So now they'll have to move around troops instead of pushing them out of the way in some circumstances. So a 50% mass reduction. Number three is gonna be... The Magic Archer. Magic Archer receives a pretty big nerf. The initial attack of the Magic Archer is going to be 
much slower. That's the uh, that's all they say. They don't give an actual time difference, but according to my notes here, it's going to be much slower. And we know it doesn't sound like much, but the initial attack speed, we learned this from Valkyrie, we learned this from Royal Hogs, that is a really big factor into the strength of a card. So that's going to be really dramatically reduced for the Magic Archer. Moving on, we have the Giant, a 2% health reduction. Interesting, maybe this will be a very soft buff for the Goblin Giant as an alternative, but either way, the Giant does receive a health nerf. I really didn't see this one coming, but it kind of makes sense. Giant is a really popular and really good card in the meta. Moving on, we have the Cannon Cart. Hit speed reduced from 1.2 to 1.3. Basically, it's increased, meaning that it, it fires a little bit slower. So, another one that I didn't necessarily see coming. I think that the cannon cart was very, very strong, but not OP and not necessarily deserving of a nerf in my opinion because it wasn't being played in that many decks inside the meta. Really only minor poison and maybe some graveyard decks here and there. So I'm not a big fan of the cannon cart nerf. And then last on the list of the balance changes, guys, is going to be Tombstone. Tombstone will see two different nerfs. The spawn speed will be reduced so that it only it spawns one less skeleton than it previously did. In addition to that, it will spawn one less death skeleton from four to three skeletons. So two total fewer skeletons out of the tombstone. And there it is, guys. Those are the 10 balance changes. Overall, I like them. I like the balance changes. They were pretty much spot on. As you guys heard, I disagree with a few here and there, but you're really never going to please everybody with any balance change list. If I've learned one thing doing YouTube here for the three years of Clash Royale, it's that everybody's going to find something they strongly disagree with in balance changes. It's one of the most polarizing uh, topics in the game. Now, guys, let's go ahead and move on to the second portion of this video where we talk about what about these cards, right? So we reached out on five cards. Number one is Expo. Expo, they're not going to touch right now. They're going to wait and see where the meta kind of lies. That one, they already kind of addressed publicly, so I won't spend too much time talking about it. Next card is going to be Barbarian Barrel. This is an interesting one, because I did notice that Barbarian Barrel now was the most popular at tournament level standard spell in the entire game. Over Zap and Log, it replaced those cards, and forget about Snowball. Like I, I, Snowball sees like almost no usage, right? A uh, little bit in 2v2, though. Bar Barrel, they said that they don't want to balance the same card three months in a row. So they gave it a buff, they gave it another buff, and I don't think they want to give it a nerf right away. And that leads me to the second response from Seth. He said that he's not quite sure if the Bar Barrel is OP or super strong or just super strong in this current meta. So he wants to wait and see. Wait and see approach here. Give a little bit more time and see where it falls after another month of kind of observation. So maybe we'll be seeing a nerf or an adjustment to the Barbarian Barrel in December, but not right now here in November. And I agree with that. I I'm not a big fan of just reactive uh, update or reactive nerfs and buffs every single month on the same card. And I think that he has a good point about is it strong because of the meta or despite the meta or somewhere in between? Because think of all the graveyard going around and Bar Barrel's really, really good against it. So we'll see, uh, wait and see approach on the bar barrel. Number three is the Royal Recruit. Now Royal Recruits, uh, Seth agrees, definitely need a buff, a big buff. And I think that we can all agree, right? Whether you like the card or you don't like the card, it needs a buff. It, Royal Recruits suck, right? I mean, I'm always passing on Royal Recruits in those new card drafts. I don't know about you guys. So he said that with the Royal Recruits, he is waiting till post worlds out of respect and due to the concerns of the competitive community. He does not want to buff a card to make it too good. A card like Royal Recruits, which could upend the entire meta. Now, I personally agree with this wait, not, not a wait and see approach, just a, a delayed approach on the Royal Recruits, but I know a lot of people have differing opinions, and I can totally accept that some people, it doesn't really sit right that, you know, they're just going to let a card be dead for another month just because of CR Finals, but at the same time, I would hate to see Recruits just dominate Clash Royale World Finals after we spent, you know, six months to a year kind of waiting to see this show, this show on December 1st in Japan. Japan, Tokyo. So, next on the list, what about 
Royal Giant, right? What about Royal Giant? Uh, he said that he's actually really happy with the state of Royal Giant right now in the game. He said it's competitively viable. It's viable at tournament level standard, albeit not overpowered at tournament level standard. And we're even seeing it at the top of ladder. Now, of course, there are frustrated players still going against it, uh, but that is more indicative of a ladder issue with over leveling and stuff like that than it is an, an imbalance in the Royal Giant. So he's very happy with the state of Royal Giant right now. And and then the last card I asked him about, the fifth and final card, is the Elite Barbarians. Seth, what's the deal with Elite Barbarians? And he said right now, it's a very challenging card to balance. And it's kind of in the workshop. He plans to hopefully try to tackle it at some point in the future. But I got the impression that he didn't, he didn't want to either buff or rework or nerf it no matter which perspective you have. He didn't want to touch the card just yet, and I didn't get the impression that he's going to be touching it next month either. So it looks like you guys who are plagued by the overlevel uh, uh, elite barbarians are going to have to just suffer. I, I apologize. I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, guys. But hey, I want to ask you guys, what do you think about all these balance changes? There's a lot to digest here, but overall, I'm excited for the new meta. I'm excited. I like the monthly balance changes as long as they don't overdo them. And and there's a lot to throw at us this time. I'm, I'm a big fan of the Mega Knight and the Skeleton Barrel buff. I think that we could see maybe that Zap Bait deck come back into the meta because Log Bait is still not in a great spot. So it'd be good to see kind of a small Spell Bait deck actually viable again in the meta. I'm not sure if this is going to be enough though with all the Bar Barrel in the P.E.K.K.A. going around. Overall, I don't expect the meta to change dramatically except for less Royal Hogs and less Royal Ghosts as far as the big takeaways on the nerfs. Royal Hog, Royal Ghost, and Magic Archer all got pre hit pretty hard. So I would expect to see less of those cards. And personally, I'm not a huge fan of the Magic Archer nerf, even though he is one of the strongest cards in the game. I also think he's one of the most exciting cards to play and to watch be played because of that high skill cap of the card. So guys, that's going to do it for this video. Again, let me know what you think of these balance changes in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching all the way till the end. And a special shout out to Seth again for answering those questions about those five other cards that we mentioned at the end of the video. So a huge shout out to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information as well. Guys, thank you for watching and as always, take care guys.